Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This is another tutorial in the series of videos that Howard from Iceflow Studios and I are doing on creating web elements. Today we're going to take a look at creating these cool little tags. They're all over the web and they look awesome, so what's not to like about them? Let's go ahead and create these. I'm going to bring back the Photoshop interface here and I'm going to hop over to my new document. My, do, my new document, excuse me, is uh, 1280 by 720. That's the size. And I've just thrown a little background in here. If you are working with a new document, I just recommend that you darken, make it, you know, make your background a little bit darker gray, something like that. Throw some noise in there, add a little bit of texture so you've got a little bit of visual interest happening back there. With all that out of the way, go ahead and grab your rounded rectangle tool and let's get started. Look to the tool options bar and set this tool to draw a new shape layer. Set the corner radius to two pixels. We don't need to be very large at all. Make sure there's no style associated with this tool right now. And the color, the fill color, has to be white. Well, it doesn't have to be white. I'm just using white because it's going to give me some good contrast. And it's going to be easy for you guys to see. I'm zoomed. I've got the document zoomed to 100% so I can see what the actual size of this tag is going to be. I don't want it to be too big, but I don't want it to be too small. That's why I'm working at 100%. So I want it to be about that big, I'd say, something like that. And now I'm going to zoom way in on it. There we go. Now what we want to do is start cutting this down to make it look more like a tag. So go ahead and grab your rectangle tool. And again, drawing shape layers. Just make sure there's no style associated with this. Color white, that's all fine. Make sure you select your vector mask here. You want to make sure this vector mask is selected. And set this tool to subtract from the shape area. The hot key for that is actually just hitting the minus key. See that? Just highlights that and draw out a little shape okay doesn't look like anything happened it's because we didn't draw over the shape area there's nothing for it to cut away because there's nothing there all we did was create this shape this path so we need to move it over our tab shape here so grab the path selection tool that's the black arrow right here hotkey is A and select our new rectangle before we move it over this we want to rotate it on an angle because we're cutting that angled tab edge into the back side of our tab. So hit Command or Control T to free transform this and I'm going to hold down my Shift key and you see that little arrow that's going to indicate we can rotate this? Go ahead and tick it a couple times until up here in the tool options bar you see that we've got it set to 45 degrees. That's exactly what we want. Once we've done that, hit the little check icon to commit that and drag this guy right down until he's over our tab. You can see, look at that, we're cutting it away. However, the problem is going to be that these are still two separate uh, paths or two separate shapes, really. We want to merge them and just sort of lose all this additional nonsense hanging out here off the edge. So just with your path selection tool, highlight both paths and hit this combine button. See that? Cool. We just have the filled area. That's exactly what we want. Now, with this area selected, hit Command or Control C and then Command or Control V. It's going to paste that shape right back into place. We haven't created a new shape layer. It's just the path here. There's a second copy of it sitting right on top of our original layer. Now, hit Command or Control T again to bring up your free transform and then right click and choose Flip Vertical. You can see that we've just flipped this vertical commit that change and now what we want to do is just select both of our shapes there are two shapes here you can see I can drag one away alright so we want to select both of those shapes and choose the intersect shape areas icon that's gonna only save the areas of the shape that are intersecting it's gonna get rid of these two wings hanging out here and leave us with a cool little tab shape there we go cool now hit the combine button and you're left with a nice little tab what we want to do now is throw some sweet little dro uh, drop shadow and other layer styles onto this tab shape. So let's go layer, layer style, and let's get started with a drop shadow. Why not? And I know that all of the angles that I'm using in this document right now are going to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to leave global light set on, and I'm going to set the angle to 90. Now when I apply other effects, it's automatically going to start out at 90 in this document. We're going to reduce the opacity to, let's say, 40%, not 40. We can change the blend mode to normal. In this case, it really isn't going to make a huge difference. Uh, we're going to set the distance to 0 and the size to 1. So it's a very subtle little drop shadow slash almost outer glow. Then we're going to go and apply an inner shadow. Now, the inner shadow we're not going to see until we add our gradient fill and our color overlay. But we're going to add it anyway. I know what I need. We're going to go for a blend mode of normal. Set the fill color or the color of the inner shadow to white. Set the opacity to 100%. We want it to be pretty intense the distance to 1 and the size to 0. It's essentially just a white line running right across the top of our shape. Now what we want to do is add a gradient overlay. The gradient overlay we want to add, we're just going to reduce the opacity here to 50%. Actually before we do that, let's, um, let's go ahead and change the gradient first. So just double click on the gradient bar there and we're going to start by selecting this black color stop. Double click on that and we're going to enter 70, 70, 70. It's kind of a just darker than medium gray gray. 
And then we're going to add a lighter gray, which is CF, CF, CF. There we go. Cool. Hit OK. And hit OK again. And we're going to reduce the opacity of this gradient now to 50%. Now what we want to do is go ahead and add a color overlay. So I'm going to tick on color overlay, and right now it's a gray. We obviously don't want that. We're going to go ahead and add a nice blue. So the blue I want is 6EA3BC. So it's kind of a very desaturated blue. Hit OK, and we're going to set the blend mode to screen. So just a, a nice subtle blue effect that's happening there. We can tick it off, tick it on. Very nice. Go ahead and hit OK to commit those changes. Now let's go ahead and punch a little hole in our tag. Every great tag has a hole that you can hang it from. So we need to definitely add that. Let's do that right now by grabbing the ellipse tool. And again, don't worry about the style or the color, any of that stuff. We're working within this vector mask. There are styles associated with the shape layer, so don't be too concerned with that. What we need to be concerned with is we want to make sure for sure that we're subtracting from shape area and that we have our vector mask selected. Once we know that, I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm just going to drag out a decent sized circle here and drop it right into place. And all that's done has cut a hole into our shape layer right through that tag. And automatically, our layer styles have styled around that little punched out hole. You can see it, we've got the little highlight on the bottom, the shadow dropping in and everything, so it looks great. Next, what we wanna do is grab the text tool. It's time to throw some text in here, so I'm gonna grab my text tool, and I'm just using Arial, regular, and 10 point. I'm gonna set the color to black, just for the sake of being able to see it, we're gonna change the color in a moment. And I'm just gonna type the word tutorials in all lowercase, I'm not using a capital T. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this text all the way against our punched out hole, just like that, and then I'm gonna nudge it back to the left 10 pixels by holding my shift key and just tapping my left arrow key. There we go. We're gonna use that for spacing later. Now what I need to do is apply a few layer styles to this text. So I'm gonna start by going layer, layer style, drop shadow, and the drop shadow is more gonna be like a lower highlight. So we're gonna set the blend mode to normal and give it a color of white. Set the opacity to 60%, the distance to 1, and let's go ahead and knock the size down to 0. So just a nice little highlight right there along the bottom of this text. It might even be a little bit difficult to see with the black text, but again, we're going to change all that in a moment. Next, we want to go ahead and add an inner shadow. The inner shadow is going to remain black. We're going to set the opacity to 30%. You can't see the black shadow over black text for obvious reasons, but we know about what we want. A distance of 1 and a size of 0 is going to fit the bill quite nicely. And then we're going to go ahead and add a color overlay. Now the color overlay, everything's going to remain the same except the color, which we're going to change to 328. Uh, let's go with BA6. That's a cool little blue. Hit OK. And you can see there we go. We've got a little bit of shadowing happening there, and you can really see a little bit of highlight along the bottom as well. Commit those changes. And now what we want to do is grab our direct selection tool. So that's the white arrow right here. Hotkey is also A. And we want to move this side of Well, it's not going to allow me to select it yet. We want to move this side of our tag over so our text is sort of centered between where the tag ends and, and this edge of the tag. So we need to first select our vector mask and then using the direct selection tool, highlight all these anchor points on the left side of the tab. Now you can use your shift and arrow keys to nudge it 10 pixels at a time. And I'm just going to nudge it over until it's touching the letter T or the first letter of whatever word you typed. Then hold down your shift key and tap the left arrow key once. It's going to pop it over to the left about 10 pixels. Deselect. And there we go, we've got our first tag. I'm gonna zoom out to 100%, see if I like the way it looks. And the text might be a little bit big, but depending on the style you're going for, it might be kind of cool. Let's just reduce the size of the text a little bit and see what happens. Let's go with nine, maybe. That's kind of cool. Let's go eight, eight's pushing it. That's a little bit too small. So we'll hang with nine. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of manually zoom in and recenter this, kind of how we like it. There we go, that's good enough, close enough for for the purposes of what we're doing here. Let's go ahead now, and before we sort of duplicate this and add a bunch more tags, it might be kind of cool to try to add a little pop of color here on the left edge of the tab. So we're gonna do that by grabbing our rectangle tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna create a rectangle. And I can see there are a number of things going on here. We have a style and we have an inner uh, or a color fill that I don't want. So we're gonna get rid of the style first by just hitting that little drop down menu and choosing the slash, boom, gone and we're left with our fill. Now, the fill, we're gonna create a very vibrant color. So let's go with a very, oh, I don't know, maybe a very bright green, something like that. Something that really jumps out at you, like so. And then I'm gonna hit Command or Control T, and I'm gonna really make this very, very, very thin. So something like so, maybe just a touch wider than that. Commit those changes, grab your Move tool, and just move it over and align it with the left edge of our tab. Now all we need to do, we've got the shape two up here in our layers panel, drag it just above our shape one, which is actually our tag. And this is our pop 
pop color, we'll call it, and then hold down your Alt or Option key and hover over these uh, where these two layers touch each other in the Layers panel, and you get the little Create Clipping Mask cursor. Select that, and you'll see that the color is not only masked, but our bright green is affected by this gradient overlay and this color overlay that we've got happening down here in our tag layer. That's great because it's nice and subtle now. I didn't really want it to be that crazy, bright, vibrant, color jumping out at me screaming. I just want it to be subtle. It's just another form of sort of organizing your tags, if you will. So let's just create a second tag here for the sake of example. So I'm going to select these three layers. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and drag them straight up. Duplicate some. Great. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to double click on the text and I'm just going to type a longer word. I'm going to type Iceflow Studios like so. And oh, that brings up another little tip that I forgot to mention before. I have aligned this text to the right. That's something you're probably going to want to do. You can do it through your Paragraph Panel. Paragraph Panel is Window Paragraph. Align it to the right. And the reason we want to align it to the right is because we know that the right, the rightmost edge of our text is always going to be about 10 pixels off of that punched out hole. This edge of the tag on the left, we're going to have to adjust depending on the length of the word that we put in there. So if it's a very short word, like it, this is going to be a much smaller tag. If it's a very long word, like supercalifragilistic or something ridiculous, it's going to go way out to the left to accommodate for that longer word. So what we need to do here is just grab this vector mask. Go ahead and grab your direct selection tool. Again, the white arrow. Highlight that and nudge it over until we get to the edge of the eye and then bump it 10 pixels more by holding down the shift icon or the shift key, excuse me, and bumping that uh, to the left using the left arrow key. Then we just grab our, uh, our pop of color here and grab our path selection tool, drag it straight over, let it realign itself, and maybe even give it a blue since Iceflow Studios is all about blue. And then select these three layers. And what am I doing here? Select the three layers. There we go. And oh, it helps to grab your normal move tool, which is the hotkey. The hotkey for that is V. So I'm going to align that right with the edge of that tab. And then I'm just going to shift and right arrow key, shift, right arrow key once more. So you can see just like that, we've created two cool little tags with different color tabs on the end. And it's actually pretty easy. Once you kind of get it down pat and go through it a couple times, you'll be able to blow these things out in less than five minutes. Or if you just create them and save them for web projects later, you'll be able to drop them right into your designs pretty much seamlessly. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Like the Tutvid page on Facebook at facebook.com slash tutvidfan. And follow me on Twitter at Tutvid. Thanks for watching, guys.